in the synagogue that Priscilla and Aquila, her husband, heard him, and they, not he, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. You see, in the church, we all have spiritual gifts. If you are a born again child of God, you have at least one spiritual gift that you have been given supernaturally the way the Spirit of God works through your life. And in this particular case, we see how Priscilla was involved in that, in teaching. Then you have another, Tabitha. Some of y'all are familiar with the name Dorcas. And as her story is a, kind of a sad one when it starts off, this woman was abounding with deeds of kindness and charity, which she continually did. You hear the service that's there. But she died. And notice that it says that they prepared her body, laid her in the upper room, but then they sent off to Peter, come and hurry and help. And you wonder exactly what they think Peter's going to do. And as you uh, look at uh, verse 39, uh, so Peter comes, and they take her to the room, and look, so many people are moved by her life, her service, and ministry. And they're weeping and showing all the tunics and the garments that she had made while she was with them. And as it turns out, you see the rest of the story. Peter is led of the Lord to uh, pray for her that she would live, and she comes back to life. Now that may not have happened in any of your Sunday school class parties, but it happened in theirs. <laughs> and that's a pretty special event for something like that to happen. But notice, because of her great testimony of service, because God had used her in so many important ways, when this miraculous thing happened, what was the outcome? And many believed in the Lord. Many believe in the Lord. Then you have Phoebe. Now she's found in the book of Romans. And it's a, it's a mention uh, from the Apostle Paul. I commend to you our sister Phoebe who is a servant of the church which is at Sincrea. The word servant is the same word that you would see in Acts. Uh, referring to the men who were called in the early church. Uh, to wait the tables and to take care of the widows and that sort of thing. It's the same word. She served in the church. That you would receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints. That you would help her in whatever matter she may have need of. For she herself has also been a helper of many and of myself as well. You notice that he says that she is a servant of the church. Now, as we look at these examples, we just want to look at a few things, first of all, about Priscilla. You see, she was bringing glory to God by teaching. And many of the women who are spiritual moms in this church over the years have taught in a lot of different ways. They've taught in Sunday school. They've, they've taught in discipleship classes. They've taught in all kinds of special activities like vacation Bible schools. They have served in many ways. Why? Because they wanted people to know Jesus. Tabitha served. And so many of the women in our churches serve today. They add service from their family also to serving people outside the homes. They bring glory to God by serving Him through serving others. And then Phoebe some women bring glory to God by being a servant of the church. Being a helper of many with the goal to bring glory to God. You can understand that as Brother Woody talked about how God brought glory to himself in, in the time of ministry that he had the opportunity to be here. We always look to see how God is going to raise Jesus up as we lift Jesus up to the world as the way, the truth, and the life. And we lift Jesus up and we bring glory to God by sharing the truth of his word like Priscilla. By serving not only our families, but people in our community like Tabitha. And by working in the local church, being a helper of many to bring glory to God. Now these things are certainly not limited 
to uh, women in Scripture. In fact, I want to call a few names uh, because of the anniversary. And some of you are going to uh, see the names of women from Little Cypress Baptist Church history. You're going to understand some of them you don't recognize at all. But for many, this is Nora Berwick, Imogene Dickerson's mom. W.U. President served in so many ways. Church treasurer, concerned about giving in the church, uh, about people tithing, uh, and things of that matter. Uh, Mrs. F.M. Taylor, a school teacher in the community, an intermediate Sunday school teacher. Uh, Betty Webb, our, our one uh, historian. I get all this information from Betty, and then those of you who add in. She was the only one that was here for the whole time. We appreciate her service in this way. But she said that while she was in Miss Taylor's class, uh, they had to memorize Psalms 101, Isaiah 53. They memorized the verses all the time. But she was a very qualified and able uh, teacher. Gertie Teal and all the work that she did in the nursery uh, with kids over so many years. Uh, then you have uh, people like uh, Edna Abair and how they worked with her mom to help get things going in the initial stages of what was going on with the church. Vivian Rivier, Grand Oak's sister who uh, loved music, led singing, uh, even back when there were just a few members. Iris Conway, uh, Elaine Pibito's sister, a uh, Sunday school teacher concerned about kids. The main message Betty said she remembered that uh, Iris would share was to be satisfied with your situation, to remember contentment. Uh, Mrs. Violet Warnick, hard worker, tell stories, get your attention. Uh, one story in particular remembered the other wise man, uh, something that she could do very well. Uh, Nelda McGuire is now our resident storyteller, and she gets all those honors. Uh, Mrs. Strother. Some of the guys in the room just cringed. The struggle was the deacon's wife, and it was her responsibility to try to make sure that Gerald and Elaine would be with those boys, and, and uh, Doc Brown's boy, and all of these boys were silent and still and quiet during church. Now, I don't think she ever had to say much. It was just the way that she looked at you, I hear. Uh, that uh, kept everybody in line. Uh, Edna Simmons, Ben Bland's mom. Uh, she was lifted in a very special way, not necessarily as a person who served in all kinds of ways, even though I'm sure she did, but especially as an example, a role model of someone who loved and supported her husband and family so well that she was a primary example of a godly woman in the church. This is E.A. Bates. Uh, came with her mom, Mrs. Hollis, uh, pianist for the church. Uh, also raised hens. Betty said she remembers walking down Alley Payne to where uh, Howard and Carol Murray lived. That was where uh, they lived in that house years ago to get eggs. And uh, her role in the church, of course, her husband being the superintendent of schools, as I remember during that time. Uh, Audine Hogan's uh, involved with a family who gave property to the church for one of the earlier buildings, encouraged building uh, on the church property. Betty Webb's mom, Maddie, or Ms. Bob Hall, uh, uh, was playing the piano. And, and she didn't tell me this, but as I was digging around in the church history, found out that Betty had been the choir director during the time as well. So that explains to me why she gets up and leads the senior no choir from time to time. Her family also was involved with taking care of two of the earlier pastors, uh, Brother Kennedy and Brother Weber. Uh, they were going to Lamar, and they would come over on Sundays, on the weekends for ministry, and they would stay in the hall's home. Uh, then Catherine Wilkinson uh, talked about lives changed because of the effect uh, of uh, when her husband went into the Marines. They had just kind of been coming to church 
not super actively involved, but after his experience in the war, he came back in and became very busy in the church. She was instrumental in establishing our church library and has been appreciated for that. Not only as a church librarian, but as a good wife, mom, a seamstress. And the fact that uh, one thing that you learn from watching her family is every child in the home had a job. They had a task to do. They learned responsibility. But we can talk about Darlene Hall, who went on to serve the home mission board. Uh, we can talk uh, about uh, Weta Owens, uh, Bo Owens and, and Ann Cunningham's mom. Bo's a pastor now up in the Lakes area. Uh, we could go on and on about many people in the church, uh, some who have gone on to be with the Lord. And certainly, uh, as you think about some of those folks, uh, you'll have the opportunity to see pictures on Anniversary Sunday as those things are set out. As you're in line to go to eat lunch that day, you'll be able to see those things. Also, we just mentioned that there are still a few copies of this book around. Uh, this is a, a history of Little Cypress Baptist Church that Brother Woody and, and the committee put together for the 50th anniversary. And if you'd like to see one of these, we still are digging out a few now and again. And you can have the opportunity to read some of those things as well. Now, all of these things are done. And certainly there are people that you have in mind folks that you would think of that you would like to be able to talk about how they ministered in your life and experience as a spiritual mom uh, in the church and, and we want to hear about that I know some of you have talked about Eva Lois McLean she was your Sunday school teacher when you were in college or something of that sort someone that you didn't hear mentioned maybe someone uh, that you would just like to say this person and call her name with someone that was very meaningful in your life uh, as, a, as a child coming to the church, young people, or, or even as an adult. And you would just like to mention them today. Who would like to do that? All right? I don't see that. It would be Dot Brim. She will always be the teacher. All right. Dot Brim. Yes, she still has her name on the wall, even though she's not. Let's see, who was it praise? Oh, we'll pass that to the student please. I won't. Miss Dot Okay, you're saying Dot Brim also? Yes. All right. Someone else? Okay, let me get any here. Celebrating Mother's Day today in Baton Rouge. 
And when you get finished, pass it over. Yeah. 